catch a glimpse of how the Native Americans used and set up a teepee. The Plains tribes actually chose this type of shelter because they traveled from place to place in search of buffalo. The word teepee is actually a Sioux name with the T-I meaning to live or to dwell in and P-I meaning used for. So the word teepee actually means to live in. So come with us today as we learn about teepees and how they're set up. The size of the teepee is in direct ratio to the size of the poles. The poles need to be perfectly straight, stripped of bark, and the ends are pointed to prevent them from slipping. A Native American woman's reputation as a housekeeper was dependent upon her teepee poles. If they were crooked, she was given a bad name. Notice how the teepee poles are arranged. The north and the south pole both point north. The door pole points to the northwest. The teepee poles are secured by one knot. The only knot used in the entire teepee. The tripod is erected by pushing and pulling. The three heaviest poles are chosen for the tripod because they're going to be the strongest. The other heavy pole is going to be used for the lift pole, which we'll see later. Teepees were owned by the women. They were normally set up by them and made by the women. The teepee poles had to be replaced about every other year because they were worn down from being drugged from place to place. set up on slightly higher ground than the surrounding area. They're also usually not set up underneath trees for fear of wind damage or lightning. The teepee poles would then be wrapped in a clockwise or the same direction as the sun travels. It would be wrapped around four times because this was thought to be a lucky number by the Native Americans. The rope would then be secured by pounding pegs or stakes into the ground and then the rope would be tied to them. Notice that we've left a space here for our last pole. This is our lift pole, and we have secured our canvas to the top of here, and we're going to lift and twist all at the same time to get our canvas up in the right position. Okay, let's go. And there it is. We're going to unroll the canvas. And it's as simple as that. The teepee is then secured by a few wooden pegs. The poles are inserted into a small pocket, which now become part of the smoke flap. The smoke flaps could then be arranged to allow the most ventilation inside the teepee. When entering a teepee, it was polite to either walk behind a person, but if you needed to walk in front of someone, pardon was asked. Excuse me. Now, the women normally sat on the south side of the teepee, while the men sat on the north side. In the center would be the fire. Behind that would be the altar, which would normally be an area of cleared earth. Behind that would be the father's seat. And if he had an eldest son, he'd be sitting to his left. Or if he had a guest, they'd be sitting on their left side or their heart side. A lining was added to the inside of the teepee. This would help keep it warm during the winter time and cooler during the summertime. It was often called a ghost screen because it would keep people from looking inside and make their homes more private. Americans would leave their teepee for a hunting trip or possibly during the winter, a door would be added. Two sticks across the door meant that it was locked and was better than any lock that we have nowadays. I'd like to thank naturalist Jenny Malcolmson for all of her help today and I hope you enjoyed learning about our Native Americans.